International Monetary Fund IMF upgrades Nigeria's economic growth forecast for to 3.4%, cuts world growth forecast to 3.6%. Asia Pacific stocks mixed as China keeps benchmark lending rate unchanged. And oil prices rebound after sharp losses as supply concerns dominate. This is Business Express on a network service of the NTA, and we are reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Benny Adams, your guide. Good to have you join us on the business side of life. And we we'll start by telling you that the International Monetary Fund, IMF, has raised Nigeria's 2022 economic growth forecast from 2.7%, it previously estimated, to 3.4%. The IMF stated this in its latest World Economic Outlook, released on Tuesday at the ongoing hybrid spring meetings in collaboration with the World Bank in Washington, D.C. The fund had revised upwards its growth forecast for Nigerian economy in 2022 by 0.3% to 2.6% compared to its earlier projection in its April 2021 edition, while it retained its growth forecast for 2021. The nation's economic projection is lower than that of sub-Saharan African region, which is expected to grow by 4.5% in 2021, 3.8% in 2021, and 4.0%. Global growth is projected to slow from an estimated 6.1% in 2021 to 3.6% in 2022 and 2023. The International Monetary Fund IMF says it's downgrading 143 countries, 86% of global GDP due to impact of inflation, COVID-19 and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. IMF president said this at the sidelines of the 2022 spring meetings in Washington, D.C. She asked for proactive response to address soaring energy prices, fertilizer and inflation to address global shocks and manage uncertainty inflation speeding up it is driven now by continuous supply chain interruptions and we need to remember that uh, china has been closing down big cities because of covid but it is driven so much because of energy and food prices as well as some of the uh, metals going up fertilizer uh, prices going up that is our toughest moment to have growth down when we want it to go up and inflation up when we want it to go down. And if you translate this into human terms, what does it mean? People's incomes down, hardships up. The spring meetings are focused on the actions that countries can take to build a resilient economy for the long term. Let's take a look at the prices of commodities in the market.
And now joining me to talk more on issues around the 2022 spring meetings and action that will shape world development is the CEO, Kauri Asset Management, Johnson Chuku. Johnson, you're welcome to Business Express. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Good. How's Lagos today, sir? Lagos is very good. Um, the weather is very clement. Okay, let's look at uh, issues around uh, COVID-19, inflation, Ukraine crisis, a clock in the wheel of recovery. How bad is this development? Uh, you must have observed that the issue of uh, COVID-19 led to uh, one uh, uh, supply chain bottlenecks, which created inflationary pressure across the globe. We've seen inflation rate at levels that have, we have not seen in the past 40 years in many of the advanced countries. The U.S. inflation rate has gone to 7.9%. U.K. Uh, has gone to 6.1%. The inflationary pressure um, uh, has actually worsened uh, beyond the COVID uh, crisis. Uh, with the invasion of uh, Ukraine by Russia, uh, we've seen uh, uh, further constraining of the supply chain uh, across the globe. We've seen energy prices spike to high levels. We've seen food prices spike. We've seen uh, price of wheat spike. And then we've also seen price of uh, natural gas increase. And these are uh, having uh, inflationary pressure across the globe. Uh, beyond that, we are also beginning to see food shortages as a result of uh, uh, constraint in assisting fertilizer, increase in fertilizer prices. And uh, mentioned that the increase in wheat prices. So we've seen countries, particularly the uh, the poor, uh, most uh, the poorest countries in the world, struggle to feed their nation, their country. So um, the uh, COVID nineteen issues have now been exacerbated by the Ukraine Russian war. Okay. Still on the art exacerbation, uh, we were talking about countries finding it difficult to recover from the impact of the pandemic, particularly developing countries. There is this uneven recovery process. Then now, this impact of the war in Ukraine on the global economy. But amid all of this, IMF upgrades Nigeria's economic growth focus to 3.4%. Were you expecting this? Well, I was positively surprised at the uh, at the upgrade. Uh, of course, I I IMF uh, underpinned their uh, decision to upgrade or their focus of a higher GDP growth rate in Nigeria on the fact that well, the uh, non oil sector of the economy is growing strongly, but beyond that, oil prices have recovered at one hundred dollars per barrel. In Nigeria, being an oil producing and export country, exporting country, should benefit from a higher oil uh, price of over one hundred six dollars as a uh, but we also must recognize the fact that Nigeria is struggling to meet its crude oil production quota. Uh, in the month of uh, March, OPEC stated that Nigeria's crude oil production was about 1.35 uh, 4 million barrels a day. This is far below its uh, OPEC quota. In month of April, the OPEC quota is about 1.735 yeah. million barrels a day. Compared to the production of about 1.354 million barrels a day, that's a gap of more than uh, close to 300,000 barrels. It is. And uh, that clearly make, uh, make it difficult for the projection that the OPEC has for the country to be realized. Because unless Nigeria is able to increase crude oil production to the level that are uh, expected of, uh, by OPEC, then we may not fully uh, take advantage of the higher crude prices. Uh, also, given the fact that we're importing all our refined petroleum products. So, we're also carrying the body of uh, oil importing countries. Uh, in as much as we should have been the benefit of it for the countries. Okay, that is for the IMF. Let's take a look at the, the World Bank. What do you make of the growth rate uh, lowered to 3.2% from 4.1% for 2022? Yes, uh, uh, that's why I, I said uh, for me, uh, if you look at the fact that we are not able to produce up to our open water, uh, added to that fact that we are also having worsening uh, insecurity across the country, which could constrain food production. And remember that uh, um, um, the agriculture accounts for more than almost a quarter of Nigeria's GDP. So if you constrain food production, uh, then you could have a slowdown in the GDP growth rate, uh, which uh, I tend to 
you align that Nigeria needs to do a few things urgently to reverse a possible slowdown in GDP growth. Rate. One, we need to uh, we need to curtail the level of in the country, particularly in the northern part of the country, and also spreading to the southern part of the country. Two, we must quickly uh, wrap up crude oil production to take advantage of um, the higher prices, uh, so that we can fully appropriate the benefit of higher crude oil prices. If we do both, we certainly have to. We will certainly record a GDP growth rate that will uh, more likely you know what I have said. But um, if none of this is done, then it is possible that our GDP growth rate will actually decelerate instead of accelerate in 2022. Okay, from from energy now, can we take a look at uh, the threats? to food security where poor and vulnerable countries are likely to be impacted heavily with the impact of this war what do you think we should do in country to strengthen food security at this time you see for nigeria um we don't really face we we're not among those countries that actually face that facing uh, food insecurity uh because to a large extent uh, we eat what we produce uh, our our consumption is highly domesticated. Uh, other than items like rice, of course, wheat is not a major step on Nigerian on Nigerian household uh, uh, tables. So Nigeria does not face that. But there are a, couple, a number of countries that are going to face uh, food insecurity. Are face currently facing food insecurity. One, the issue of uh, availability of fertilizer is worsening food production in places like Brazil, which are major food exporters. So you're going to see food exports. Increase and these uh, poorest countries are one. They are dependent on imported food items, and uh, they are also highly indebted. Uh, so, it, in the first place, uh, given that they are more than dependent on imported food items, and food prices are going to go up or already going up, uh, they, are, they don't have uh, the resources to continue to import those food items at such higher uh, prices. So. Some countries are highly vulnerable, but I, like I said earlier, Nigeria is not one of those that are highly vulnerable as it, it relates to food insecurity. Uh, but that does not mean we shouldn't be concerned that the number of African countries could fall into that category. Well, that is good news coming from you. Before I let you go, the World Bank President David Malpo says the debt crisis will continue to worsen. How can Nigeria avert this? Most so that we need a lot of money for infrastructural investment or investment in infrastructure, critical infrastructure. Yeah, for me, Nigeria, uh, we need to review our um, our uh, fiscal plan or uh, in terms of funding of infrastructure. I've said this repeatedly that look, we do not have the revenue profile to continue to fund infrastructure and quickly develop infrastructure to a world class level if we have to rely on budget allocations. Uh, we need to review the approach to infrastructure funding. And the, the appropriate thing to do is to bring in private capital, come up with a proper appropriate legal and commercial framework that will allow private capital to invest in infrastructure in the country. So that government will focus on social infrastructure and those infrastructure that are the commercial, those infrastructure, fiscal infrastructure that are commercially viable. That will reduce the burden we have. Again, we also need to look at some of our expenditures that are not absolutely necessary at the federal level or at the uh, public sector level. Issues of subsidy, we need to look at again what the bill is spending about 4.5 trillion naira this year on subsidy payments. That could a larger to larger thing reduce the debt that Nigeria will incur if that was not spent on subsidy and possibly free up resources for critical social investment, such as uh, investing in healthcare, education, and those investments that will have multiply effect on the economic recovery and growth of the country. Wow. Thank you so very much for sharing those uh, deep uh, thoughts with us at this particular point in time, Johnson Chiku. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Africa Export Import Bank has released the consolidated financial statements of the bank and its wholly owed subsidiaries. Altogether referred to as the Afri Exim Bank Group for the year ended 31st December 2021. The group results demonstrated strong and resilient growth with 
interest income crossing the 1 billion US dollars mark once again. After Exxon Group's uh, total assets grew by 13.4% uh, from $19.3 billion as at 31st December 2020 to about $22 billion as at 31st of December 2021, primarily due to the 11.5% growth in net loans and advances and a 12.1% increase in cash and cash equivalents to 18. $2 billion and $3.1 billion respectively. With significant growth in guarantees and letters of credit in line with strategy, total assets and guarantees of the group rose from $21.7 billion US in 2020 to $25 billion as at 31st December 2021. Now a quick break, we'll get to resume shortly. Moving on, oil prices rebounded on Wednesday as a drop in U.S. oil inventories and concerns over tighter supplies from Russia and Libya drove a recovery from the previous session's sharp losses. Brent crude features rose 66 cents to $107.91 a barrel. The front month's WTI crude features contract, which expires on Wednesday, rose 78 cents to $103.34, while second month contract gained uh, 69 cents to $102.74. And on the equities markets in Nigeria closed on a positive note this Wednesday, recording a second day of gains in the week. The NGX all share index inched up by 1.25% uh, at a 40 8,138.71 basis point as market capitalization increased to 25.952 trillion naira. Investors gained 349.5 million shares valued at 3.699 billion naira in 4,587 deals. Universal Insurance and other insurance companies are the top performers for the day. Let's now join Bosset Abel for updates on the global stocks. Welcome to the Global Market Review. Now, let's start by telling you that Google is investing in its first ever Africa Product Development Center in Kenya, in Kenya capital, Nairobi, as it positions itself to serve a growing base of internet users on the continent. Meanwhile, the equities market stocks traded mostly in negative territory this Wednesday, with the exception of South Africa's GSE Africa Top 40, which bucked the downward trend and posted a gain of 0.39% across 7,130.63. For Asia, it was mixed trading as China defiled expectations by keeping its benchmark lending rates unchanged. Mainland Chinese stocks led losses among the region's major markets. The Shanghai Composite closed 1.35% lower at 3,151.05. The Hansen Index also dipped 0.40% across 20,944.67, while the Nikkei topped 0.86% at 27,217.85. 
European stocks saw some positive gains as investors monitor development in Ukraine and access the IMF's latest global economic forecast. The DAX in Germany gets, gained 0.31%, FTSE 0.24%, and CAC 40 of France also topped 1.05% across 6603.11. In the United States, stock futures slipped in early trading as investors digested disappointing next flicks earnings and looked ahead to a new batch of companies set to report this Wednesday. Futures on the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell by 0.1%, S&P 500 0.24%, and Nasdaq Composite also dipped 0.43%. That's the Global Markets Review. I am Bosede Abel. Oh, thank you, Bosede. Let's now have a quick look at how the Naira is exchanging for other currencies. Business Express returns tomorrow morning. Keep a date with us and stay safe.